Today, two unnerving items relating to Uganda, one of which involves my government of Canada in an act of uh, insufferable duplicity, but I'll come to that in a moment. First of all, the AIDS, HIV AIDS Prevention and Control Bill, which went through the Ugandan Parliament last week, is still in a kind of limbo. We don't know yet whether it's in the hands of the President for signature. The, the parliamentary process in Uganda is so convoluted as to be impenetrable. The legislature passes a bill, it then sends it to the president for signature, the president has 30 days and then sends it back to the legislature. The legislature then looks at it again, sends it back to the president, the president has another 30 days, sends it back to the legislature, it can be amended, it can be embraced, it can be rejected. President Museveni has all of those options in play. It's hard to know when the finale will come. What's good about that is that it gives all of us and the governments of the world time to put real pressure on President Museveni to expunge the most odious provisions of the bill or to reject the bill in toto. Now remember this bill. It suggests strongly the mandatory testing of pregnant women, which is a, an odious offense against human rights. It suggests the mandatory testing of all women who have suffered sexual abuse and outrageous violation of human rights. And it invites and encourages the criminalization of, uh, of transmission in a way which puts people right across the country who are HIV positive at risk. Just think of the recent case with the nurse who was uh, convicted and jailed for three years for what amounted to a workplace accident. And the primary reason for the jailing was the fact that she's HIV positive. So obviously there has to be pressure brought. But there's something missing. And what's missing is UN AIDS. What was UN AIDS doing within Uganda in fighting the bill? Where was the voice? And where is the voice at the center? Before I sat down to record this commentary, I looked at the website of UN AIDS and the homepage has a, a, a proliferation of issues, not a single one of which deals with the Ugandan legislation. That's just unbelievable. The bill is an affront to everything UN AIDS ostensibly stands for. Item number two. The government of Canada has refused to grant entry visas to 10 gay Ugandan activists who want to attend World Pride here in Toronto next month. Now there may be a variety of, issues, of reasons given, but the real reasons that underlie it is the possibility that maybe, maybe one or two of the activists will ask for asylum. Well, why shouldn't they ask for asylum? Why shouldn't they get asylum? Canada was one of the strongest voices condemning the anti-gay legislation of several weeks ago in Uganda, and they were one of the strongest voices showing solidarity with the gay activists who are now working in an atmosphere of fear and insecurity in the country. Boy, oh boy, you talk about hypocrisy. When it comes to the defense of human rights, the protestations of the government of Canada are sheer poppycock. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.